Hello, 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 everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayyam and welcome back to the channel, right? Today, we're going to solve this interesting problem of four devices. And this is an interesting problem. Also, I know some of you might face the problem of the lead code down issue. It was that during the contest also it happens. That's why uh, the contest solutions are about delayed. But don't worry, I'll post them quickly as soon as possible, right? Uh, this question, four devices, okay? This question, I would trade this problem mm, it's easy but it's a uh, uh, it's better way or you say the most optimal way of implementing is a slightly tricky thing but not very difficult at the same time so i would rate this problem eight out of ten it's a good problem it's a good medium problem it's like it's a medium problem if you solve the brute force way it would be seven problem easy medium and then if you solve the optimal way it's a medium hard problem okay given an integer array nums return the sum of divisors of the integer in that array that have exactly four divisors there's no such integer in the array return zero what that means is we are given an array what do you have to do go to each integer ask how many divisors you have oh you have four divisors can give me the sum of all the divisors of the particular number and sum these for all the possible numbers which are available in the array for example we have 21 we have 4 we have 7 21 have divisors what one I think right in school days, so it's uh, not so sorry, three, seven, and twenty-one. So three is also there, seven is also there, twenty-one is also there, one is also there. Four divisor, exactly four divisors. Pick seven, pick three, pick one, pick twenty-one. Sum it up, it will be thirty-two. Four divisors have what one, two, and four. Only three not allowed. Seven, it's one and seven not allowed. So only twenty-one satisfy the constraint. Only some of the divisors of thirty-two. Remember that no need to give the sum of the numbers, sum of the divisors has been asked. So it will be 32. Perfect, Sayam. After this, obviously, what is our first thought process? Go to the constraints. Go to the constraints. Okay. What does constraint tell us? Constraint tell us nums of i is less than or equals to 10 power 5. Perfectly fine. That makes sense. And uh, what you can do? And n is less than or equals to 10 power 4. Okay, 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 that makes sense, that makes sense, which means if we can somehow iterate on each element, on each element, and for each element, can we compute the divisors? Like what is our initial thought process? Compute all divisors, compute all divisors, and then again check whether it has four divisors it has four divisors and then just sum them just sum them if if it is true right like true wale case ke andar, we will gonna do that so let's try to think about the time complexity so uh, if you iterate on each element this is definitely require of o of n time Yes, I am. Now, for every number, can we, how much optimization we can do? The job is here because this is we cannot change. This is fixed, right? Because every number we have to check how many divisors are there. This is sort of fixed. Okay, let's try to think about this. Compute all divisors. Okay, how you can do that? Uh, the naive way is uh, you just iterate from what? 1 to n. Or you can say n minus one, or you can you can iterate from two to n minus one also for some better time complexity. Two to n minus one. Find out all the divisors because one and n so always are the divisors of the current number, right? So you don't need to check for them. Two to n minus one, you iterate and you check oh whether this number is divisible by let's say your number num or not, nums of i or not. You're gonna check that and whatever divides, just keep on adding and uh, increasing the count, maintain a counter. Maintain the sum of the divisor for that particular number, and then you're gonna job done. For example, what do you wanna do? You wanna go for 21, and you're gonna start with 2, then you go to 3, you wanna go for 4, till 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 20, you're gonna go and check. Oh, it divides 21, it divides 21, whatever divides. Oh, 2 divides, no, 3 divides, 7 divides. Oh, 21 and 1 are already there. So just sum them up. So you can do this, obviously, and this is a very basic way. Obviously, this won't pass by. How much time it will take? You are running a loop from 2 to n minus 1, which will take another time of O of n, n into O of n, 
uh, that won't suffice. That won't suffice, and it will be lead to T L E O F N square because n is ten power four. If had n had been ten power three, then did this would have been work. But this time, no. Okay, what is the another approach? So people can think, oh, Sayam, let's try to reduce this part because this part I already told we cannot reduce. Can we find divisors quickly in O of n rather than O of root n? Yes, we can do use the prime trick. Trick. If you have sort of remember, or you can say the factorization and uh, not prime trick. I uh, sort of, but uh, yeah, you can say that finding all the factors. So what are you gonna do that instead of running from two to n, run from two to square root of n. That is very very important. Why? Let me just tell you. Whenever you are checking a factor, you know that if let's say a number i divides, and this is very standard trick, i divides n, then n by i also divides n, also divides n. Uh, yes, I am definitely it does. For example, let's say you have eighteen. Let's say two divides eighteen, then eighteen by two, also which is nine, also divides. Why? Because if you do the multiplication, n by i into i. n itself right means it is a divisor of n itself using this trick you just need to iterate till square root of n and because the other remaining factors which are the larger factors you can just find using this n by i operation let me just help to show you also let's just 18 is there so what are its factors so what are you going to do it's like 2 it's like 3 it's like uh, and 6 uh, and 9 obviously in 18 and 1 So when you are checking for two, you already account for nine. When you are checking for three, you already account for six. Six in that uh, iteration itself, you don't need to go till six. You just need to go till square root of eighteen, which is nothing but you can say four point five something, right? And you already accounted for eighteen and one. Already are accounted. That means this is an interesting and optimization. So what are you gonna do? Finding the divisors, you just need to iterate till square root of it. Obviously, there is a H case obviously you remember that let's say this is a perfect square let's say thirty six six and n by six uh six like thirty six by six both are same you just need to make sure how you count your uh, factors uh, accordingly right because it has actually four factors uh, not four factors means repetitive n by i and i uh, six are are same so you have to take care of that so what are you gonna do it's very simple again iterate in each element iterate. And then for each element, just find the divisors in just optimized way of finding the divisors and maintain a temporary sum. You can say that temporary sum you can maintain and you can maintain the count of divisors easily. You can do that whenever number divides. Obviously, instead of now counting one, you will count twice because i and n by i both divides. So we'll count two numbers. But if there is an edge case, both. How will you check that? If i into i equals to equals equals to equals to n. And in this case, you will count only once. Otherwise, you will count two vectors, right? You can just maintain that. You can maintain the sum accordingly, and you can finally add to your answer, right? This is another way. Let me just quickly show you the code, and then we'll find an optimal way of doing that. Let's try to see, understand this. So, what are you gonna do? You're gonna uh, make an answer. You're gonna initialize count equals to two because already we have two vectors, right? One and n. You're gonna already sum them up. I current number here. N is I itself. Plus one because the one is also divisible. Then you're gonna just go from two to square root of i. You can say square root of i or j into j less than equal to i. Both works, right? So what are you gonna do? You're gonna just check. Oh, if this number divides, the current number j divides i. That means i by j also is a factor. But just we need to check whether this j into j should not be equal to i. Perfect factor condition, the edge case, right? In this case, if it is not equal, you just count two factors. You just add this number. You just add another factor also. Otherwise, you just add one factor and count one itself. You just at the end of this loop of this number iteration, you just need to check. Oh, there are four count, and if it is so, just add this temp to your answer. Just return the answer. I hope you are getting it. This was pretty straightforward. Perfectly right, Sam. We got it, and most of the people got it. It can be optimized on that. Let's say the number went up to ten power nine. Then The ten complexity, its its current time complexity is what square root of n root n. Sorry, n root n. And if n is ten power nine, for uh, let's say the largest number, you can say n root. You can say max element is the time complexity. 
currently. So if max element goes to 10 power 9, it will be like 10 power 4, or you can say 10 power 5 also into 10 power 4, and which will give you a TLE. Oh, same, yeah. So square root of n root square root of max element won't suffice. Won't suffice. Perfectly fine. Can we optimize on that part? Let's try to understand that. And here comes the C trick. C trick, and it's a very important trick in competitive programming. You are doing CP, uh, code forces. You have seen this trick. What do you do? What do you do? This is also an efficient way of calculating primes. So, see, what we generally do is you're going to iterate and you're going to pre compute something. What are you going to pre compute? You're going to pre compute the sum and count of every number already. Right. And then you can effectively, easily iterate and for every number in constant amount of time tell what is the sum and what is the count of the divisor of the particular number. How can we do that? For that, you should know and understand the idea of C. So, C, what does it do is you're going to iterate, let's say your i from 2 to your max element possible. But let's say we are just iterating from 10 power 5 for all elements because the maximum element possible is 10 power 5. And we're going to do i plus plus. Similarly, here, now, understand that what I'm doing, the loop logic is very, very important. You start from i, you go from 10 power 5, but instead of iterating 1, 1 or incre incrementing 1, 1, you're going to increment i times. You're just iterating on the multiples of i. Let's say you are starting with 2. You're going to iterate on the multiples of 2. 4, 6, 8, till 10 power 5. 4, uh, 10 power 5 because this is also an even. Similarly, you're going to iterate on 3 and go for 3. Or you can say 2 also right here. 3, 6, 9 and so on. And this is obviously a divisor of these numbers. Right? In this way, can we do something better. Now, remember that this loop, time complexity is very, very important. See, I'm not incrementing. If ideally, if we incremented 1, 1, the time complexity would have been n square. But no, this is not the case. Here, try to understand that I'm incrementing i, i times. I am incrementing i, i times. So, where as soon as our i becomes larger, the number of iteration of the j loop is going to keep on decreasing. If you go to 4, we start from 4, then 8, then 12, and so on. So, I'm going to not prove the time complexity. You can check it out on blocks. The time complexity turns out to be O of log of log n. Okay. This is a general and standard trick. Uh, it's very long video to explain this. Prove this time complexity. You can remember that this is the N of log n log n. Right. Okay. So, yes. Can we use this trick to find out and uh, somehow calculate the count and the sum of the divisor for every particular number? So, in here also, we are iterating for every number. So, i is our number. Now, j is what? j, uh, you can say, uh, uh, sorry, j is our number, sorry, sorry, i is our divisor. Right. Now, instead, we are going in a reverse way. Instead of going from the number to divisor, we are going divisor to number. Okay, we are treating, let's, let's, this is a divisor. What is the possible number, the current number is a divisor of? This is the relation we are talking about. So, what are you going to do? For 2, let's mark all the numbers which 2 is a divisor of and increase their count. So, what are you going to do? Go for 2, go for 4, go for 6, go for 8. Till, till all the numbers, what are you going to do? You maintain a count array which will tell you the number of divisor of the current element and a sum array, the sum of the divisor of the current element. So, you're going to increase the count of that number of, uh, of that number because 2 is a divisor of. So, you will increase that. And you're going to sum them also plus equals to i because i is a divisor of j. Very, very important. In the jth loop, j is our number. Now, j is not fixed. i is fixed. The divisor is fixed and we are iterating on the numbers. Oh, which number i is a divisor of? And this is how gonna we do that. Because the time complexity of this solution is of O of n log n, we're going to make this and iterate this array. Right. For example, let me just quickly show you till a smaller number. Let's say Let's say we have uh, till uh, 6 only, I, I show you. So, what happens? So, we start with i equals to 2, right? So, let's maintain a count array also. And let's maintain a sum array also. That will help you understand. But initially, uh, the count is 1, right? Because 1 is always a factor. So, we are not considering sum is also 1 because 1 is a divisor. So, initially, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Then, sum is also 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I'm making this is a one base array, like uh, forget about a zero here. There would be a zero, but okay, let's try to read it. This is one, one, 
this is uh, i hope you're getting it 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so i equals to 2 we are starting then what are you going to do we're going to add those okay what are the numbers which are uh, i is a divisor of this 2 this 4 which is 6 so we're going to increment that so at 2 make it 2 at 4 at make it 4 at 6 we make it 6 also divisor also is there we're going to add that so at 2 we're going to add 3 means 2 2 we are going to adding so 3 and this is also 3 perfectly fine right now let's uh, go to i equals to 3 now what are the possible things 3 and 6 are there right Sayam. so what are you going to do at 3 and 6 we're going to increase the count so we'll make it 2 because when the count is increases now 6 already have a 2 now we will increment it by 1 3 so the count becomes 3 because there are 3 divisors we have found until now right and then we're going to sum also increase will one to make it four because we'll add three and here what are you going to do add three it'll become six right same now if we go i equals to four what happens there's nothing because only less than six we are talking about eight is out of bound we cannot do anything but we will increase one count so we'll increase the count of four which will be three here and here it becomes seven right same now we go to i equals to five again here is the count will increase to 2 and the sum will be increased to 6 1 plus 5 6 now i equals to 6 comes now what are you gonna do again increase the count which is 4 we increase the count which is 12 and this is the beauty the final array if you look like, like 0 1 2 2 3 2 4 this is the count array this is the count array and what is the sum array sum array look like 0 1 3 4 7 6 12 and easily using these array, you can tell your and you can iterate into your nums array. Just find the count, should be equals to 4, and just add the sum directly in O of 1 time, right? Query, whatever it is that you can say, query, you can easily do in O of 1 time. You've already pre computed it. So, O of 1 time, you, you do the query into N, O of N, you're just iterating plus the pre computation part, which is O of log of log N. And this is the beautiful optimization. We have did that. I hope you understood it. Let me just quickly show you the implementation so that you understand it deeply. Right. So yeah, this is the implementation I'm talking about. It's very beautiful. You can see that. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna pre-compute. So you will write a solve function to pre-compute it. You're gonna write count and you can write sum. Okay, what are the count and the sum? You can say that I have just made it because we just need to pre-compute once. You can ignore this, but it's a good optimization at the end because uh if we if the function is called again and again you don't need to build that array again and again right only once you have to build it so i just make it false and just tell oh if it is true uh, if, if it is make it false if already it's true then no need to build this already built right return to otherwise build make it built equals to two uh, you can ignore this step yeah for the first time we have to resize the array okay 10 power 5 plus 1 you can uh, initialize the maxi of the current array also that's also work but since we are initializing it only once so try to uh, make it for max possible right because max will change every time but this won't change so 10 power 5 plus 1 comma 1 sum of 1 we are initializing with 1 1 i hope you are getting it because 1 is always a divisor and a count also increases for that then what you gonna do you gonna iterate from i equals to 2 to 10 power 5 to i plus plus j from i to j plus equals to i this is very very important that's what that reduces the time complexity for j i is a divisor we increase the count for j the i is a divisor we increase the sum that is very very important and always distinct also because we are iterating uniquely okay so it, there's no you can say overlap or you can say duplicacy is there it's just we are iterating on the multiples and that's job done we just did that then what are you going to do you just iterate in the nums array you're going to check count equals equal to four answer plus equals to sum of i and just boom return the answer I hope you understood it and like the video. And yeah, if you like the video, make sure to share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And then we'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep learning. Goodbye.